Medianoche. 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 Medianoche.
not even before it was trendy. Like even going back to when I was a jit, I was always like, yo, four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep. And then I was like, yo, it's just taking a toll on me. I'm not as focused and on point as I could be had I just gone to sleep. What's the longest that you've stayed with or without sleep? One time, actually, uh, I had a couple shows in New York with basically, well, you know, when we were the Vagabonds. And, bro, honestly, between getting the show sets together, because we have, you know, our studio set up. So we had all of our sessions. We had everything. We're, we're burning down the, the, the show mixes, uh, rehearsing, getting everything ready for the trip, packing, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like a five-day stay in New York that we had. And, yo, between the last night in Miami to when I finally went to bed in New York, no lie, it was 36 hours. It was probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done. That's tough, man. And, you know, New York is not like Miami. You're walking everywhere. Mm. So I'm walking everywhere on 36 hours of sleep. Damn. Yeah, it was pretty rough. I remember, uh, you know, now that you mentioned it, out-of-state shows, I I wanted to bring this up. You're the first artist that I've ever performed with out-of-state. When, when you right. and I performed for A3C for the, right. for the 10 year anniversary, that was my first time out of state. Damn. You know? That's so, crazy. I thought you would have been out of state before that. Yeah, you would think so, man. But, like, you know, I just, I always stayed in Florida. I had yeah. performed all over Florida. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. never actually broke out of the state. Yeah. You know? So that, that was, was tight, a, man. That was a dope show. Yeah. I remember bro. that. H2 was DJing. I, Mm-hmm. Chase DJ Green H2. was performing. Yeah, it Chase was dope Green. Night. I got some footage of that. I mean, I'm, I'm planning on putting it out at some point in the near future. But, yeah, you know. But um, yeah, man, that was A3C. Like, now that we're on the topic, like, looking back, how do you feel like that whole experience went? It was a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I think I could have been better prepared. Um, you know, just in the sense of linking up with people beforehand. I think I made the mistake that a lot of artists make that you probably made too of trying to link with people when you get there as opposed to already having that figured out two, three months before because it happens to us being in Miami where people come from out of town. And they're like, yo, bro, I'm in town. Let's link, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yo, I live here, bro. <laughs> you more on vacation mode, you know, hustle a little bit mode. I have things I have to tend to. And I didn't realize that we were doing that when we would go out of town till people started hitting me with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I, I ain't really get to, through people that I'm cool with, people that I'm friends with, I didn't get to make mutual acquaintances of theirs because of that poor planning on my part. Um, you know, I got to learn how to rock out of stage crowds, even though I already had done a few out of, my bad, out of town yeah. stages. I'd already rocked out of town beforehand, but like A3C is a whole different animal, a whole different environment where, you know, that whole week everybody's there for dope rap, dope hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So they're more receptive to receptive to it already. You know what I'm saying? And it and it taught me how to deal with that energy. It was a dope vibe, dope times. You do you think that that crowd that you and I performed in front of was receptive? Nah. It was not not that one, but just the overall energy of like, the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually had people after the fact come up to me. It was like, yo, you killed that shit. You have a CD, do you have this, do you have that? Which is funny. That's that's so hip-hop in a sense that, you know what I'm saying? During the performance, everybody's super cool, not really reacting and shit. And then after the fact, it's like, yo, I got to give you your props. You killed it. On the low. I wonder what's the complex behind that. I remember I was talking with somebody about it. I don't even know if I mentioned this on the podcast, but I almost feel like that... That whole stigma of like a room full of rappers acting like they're too cool for school when you're on stage, it's almost like an inferiority complex. I think it is. Yeah. It's like they don't want you, they don't want it to look like you would do better than they do. But yeah. They, but they expect you to do it for them, you know? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's crazy because it, it almost be like All Star Weekend in a sense that. A lot of the people in the crowd, definitely the the you know what I'm saying, the floor seat people in the first few rows are all ball players, you yeah. know. So they're all looking at you like, man, I would just be having the time of my life, bro. That's that's the crazy shit though, is that when you look at that, they're all you know having a ball, all laughing, all kicking it together. Nobody's too cool for each other, even though on a day to day basis they kind of are. Yeah. Versus us, it's like our moment to shine is the fucking stage, are the shows. And, you know, 
you have people that for whatever conflict of interest, whether they're an artist, whether they're a manager to another artist, whatever the case may be, they just act too cool. And then on the sideline after the fact, yo, you killed that. That was dope. Let's link. Let's work. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, and you know, that, that whole vibe that I get when I walk into a room, bro, which is a bunch of rappers and like, you know, you already know everybody here is performing. You know, Brother Ali has this one line where he's like, I rock the party where, he goes, I rock the party where half the crowd is rappers and analyze addiction as if their opinion mattered. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's That's like, dope, it's like you rock in front of a crowd all the crowd are rappers and everyone that's not a rapper are the one, two, three homies that's supporting their homie that raps. Yeah. And they're and all riding out after their set. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, that, that's why I'm real picky about the shows that I do now. Like, if you notice back then when we when we were on the grind trying to make a, a name for ourselves, I'm sure it was the same shit for you. You was taking every show that you possibly could get. Yeah. And then after, like, looking back at it, I was like, nah, this ain't the way to move. Like, this is... I'm performing for people... That's my competition or possible colleagues and shit, as opposed to performing for the people that, you know, I can become fans. Because there's a difference between a consumer in that sense and other artists waiting to go after you or that just went on before you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm real picky about that because the last show that I did in Miami was actually about to be two years ago. Funny enough, I haven't even performed in like two years in Miami. Um, it was me and Zoe Dollars. And, yo, the, like, all the entire crowd, 100% of the crowd, minus the two or three homeboys each and minus the girlfriends and shit, were all rappers. So when I got up there, I'm like, yo, like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like you, you're you trying to think of something that you can say that applies to everybody so they can make noise. Yeah. And you should be like, if you rap, make some noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you rap, make some noise. Ah. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't got shit on me, fool. <laughs> Drop that. <laughs> and the craziest shit, now that I think about it, since I, you know, we were just talking about New York a, a couple minutes ago, I think the best reaction I've ever had to a show, ironically enough, was in New York. Yeah. All the shows we did in New York. And New York has that rep for being like the toughest crowd to please in anything. But yo, the love that me and basically had gotten in New York back then was so crazy that I was like, yo. Y'all are supposed to be the tough crowd. Like, what the fuck? It was crazy. To the point where one of the shows, we had our set that we did, like 20, 25-minute set. They wanted us to perform one more. And that was my first time experiencing that. I thought that shit was crazy to me. Word, man. Um, I think that out-of-town shows... So Okay, to segue into out-of-town shows, I think that the smart thing for a lo for anybody that makes music and you're still local, you haven't like transitioned to being like nationwide, is like all these little local shows and open mics that cats be doing, like, yo, it's not about, it's like, it's not about like how many open mics you do, but like maybe take advantage of the fact that you are performing and like film it and yeah. then take That's the footage, content. take the footage and make a highlight reel of all your dope moments in your shows. And then you can submit that to like festivals and yeah. shit. And at the same time, it's, it's good practice. Yeah, you you build your stage presence up a lot. So I'm I'm thankful that I went on that fucking crazy run I had a couple years back. You know what I'm saying? Like from a business standpoint, I, it probably wasn't the best idea, but it taught me how to how to rock a stage. And now it's like riding a bike. You never forget the shit. All right, so so let's break this down. Like, I'm pretty sure that at some point, like your views and not it's not going to align with mine, which is great. Of course, you know? but like. Let's think. Let, let's let's weigh out the pros and cons, right? Yeah. Performing a lot in Miami, performing a lot in your hometown, and not getting paid for it. Like, what what's the good and bad thing about it? Let's go down the list. The good is that, um, you know, even if you're performing for a lot of artists or entourage and shit like that, and not necessarily fans, you're still kind of building a name for yourself. Right. Your name's ringing out. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Which is the best pro that you can ask for as an artist. Like it's a better look to it's a better look that your name's on the flyer than not having it yeah, on the flyer. Especially when you're first, you know what I'm saying, starting out and getting your feet wet with the shit. Like definitely, um, you know, and also building your stage presence, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, seeing what best technique is, is good for you as a as a performer. You know, because everybody has different tolerances as far as like um, breath control and all that kind of shit. So. You know, if you're at a certain level where you're just starting out, you're trying to get your feet wet, you're trying to get your name out there, uh, honestly, it's all pros. I mean, the con, obviously, is that you're not getting paid for it. Okay, so but, so, so that's, that's the part that I wanted to, like, break down. It always goes down to the cons. 
you right. know like, <laughs> so like not getting paid for it, like what's good and bad about that like <laughs> if i may i think that yeah. like not getting paid for a show yeah it's not always a good look but if you say you're not going to perform unless if you get paid you're, you're going to cut down your demand from these little booking promoters like almost 100 percent, bro hell yeah like I remember when I was performing a lot, man, when I was throwing shows at Eve and I was yeah, performing yeah. at the stage and here the and goose. there. Yeah, Goose, the goose. Lounge, yeah. <laughs> Sidebar, all these spots. I, like They would hit me up. Yo, you want to rock? All right, for sure. And I'll go. I'll rock. Everyone loved it. You get off stage. Yo, you killed it. You killed it. Yo, 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 yo. And then, ah, oh, awesome. I've proved my worth. Now, next time they hit me up, I'm going to charge them. Yeah. And then they hit you up, yo, you want to perform this time? And you hit them with the, you know, I would like to get paid. You know, you don't have a manager, so you represent yourself. You try to negotiate it. That shit turns them off, you know? Instant. Because they want they want what benefits them, even if it doesn't fully benefit you. To, you be, know? to be real, just, you know, speaking from people on that side of the line. Most of them are in the red anyway. They don't have money to give you. So, I mean, some of them, they're greedy. They're bad business. But a lot of the times, they genuinely don't even have the money to pay. They're barely breaking even on, like, the the ticket sales and, and like, the drinks and shit at the bar. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like a vicious cycle where the rappers hate the promoters, the promoters hate the rappers, but it's like, yo, nobody's really getting paid from this shit. Now, I will say... You know, of course you want to get paid. Like, we all got to keep the lights on. We all got bills to pay and shit. But um, it, it honestly taught me humility, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because on stage, you feel like the shit. Like, damn, I just killed it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody seeing me, blah, blah, blah. But then that humility of you having to go home with nothing to show for it other than, you know, the photos you took, the, the video footage that you got, the people giving you props and shit. It's like, damn, I still need to eat, though. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, you it's like what you said. Promoters get turned off. And just like out of 10 rappers or let's say 50 rappers, you have the one that will take off. You know, the one or two that will take off. It works the same way with the promoters. So if you turn them off completely and they all speak with each other, they all talk, nobody wants to fuck with you. Had you just, you know, kind of like humbled yourself or, you know, just... Looked at it, looked at the bigger picture, the long term of it. If one of those promoters does a good show and they take off, you hope they remember the fact that you fucked with them even when they couldn't pay you. And now when they have this bigger show, they either have the budget to pay you and put you on it or at the very least put you on and give you a look in front of an actual now crowd that's not just rappers and entourage. It's it's fans. It's your possible consumers and shit. What? What are your thoughts on like Miami hip hop crowds in general? Whether it be just a bunch of rappers or it be like club goers that just wander into a club, into a yeah. venue, or like actual hip hop. What's your take on like the Miami hip hop audience right now? Right, I ain't even gonna lie to you, bro. Like my my life's been so hectic that. Outside of the time that I've dedicated to my craft and working on new music, I haven't even stepped out like that. But I will say that from what I've seen, the few times I have stepped out, it's better than when you and me were grinding. I, I could honestly say it's better because what I'm noticing more is that artists are taking the fucking baton and they're throwing the shows themselves. I like to think you're a pioneer of that because when you were doing that, nobody was doing that shit. Nobody was like, fuck it. I'm a book myself. Other than you and like Lex One and the GTPS, nobody was throwing their own shows like that. You know what I'm saying? If they were, they were just strictly booking other artists, maybe putting on one of their acts, kind of kind of a thing. But for an artist to to do their own show, y'all were the first two doing that. And now I'm starting to see more of that. Of artists, you know, getting a little warehouse, getting a little venue, and they put their own show together and they're actually bringing out their fans. You know, a lot, sometimes it'll be friends and family and shit like that. But you'll have fans that they've made off of their online promo that come and see them. So I would say it's better. Um, but just as a whole, man, Miami is a real transit city, like you say. You know what I'm saying? So our music market isn't really for 
bubbling local indie acts. People want what's already popping. The same way that nobody gives a shit about the Dolphins or the Marlins or the Heat until they're popping, until they're winning. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it, in that sense, we have that curse. We're such a big internationally known party city that the local side of things gets overshadowed a lot. And honestly, I don't see that changing because yeah, I know you're about to get into it, no, but, you know, like it, it kind of doesn't make sense to me that you have dudes like uh, Denzel Curry, uh, Zoe Dollars, uh, you know, acts like that, that they're signed acts. They're known, you know, on all corners of the Internet that have to do with hip hop. Their content is there. They're being spoken about, whether it's uh, positively, negatively, whatever. But when it comes to the hometown, you go ask five random people who, about them, they probably couldn't tell you who they are. Yeah, I think that it's a revolving door. Like Miami, um, as much as I love Miami, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I love y'all. Hey, listen, I love y'all. <laughs> hey, man, I... I've had so many chances to go, and I I don't think I ever will. I love this city too much, man. I'm always right for it. uh, Like, it's one of those situations where I guess it just depends on on my attitude. Because some years ago, I was sick of it. When I broke out to California, I was like, man, like, okay, you, you have mentioned it. Dog, I had put out all this music. I was just, I was just, you know what it is? I was just kind of bitter because I had put out all this music. I threw, I put on these shows. I established relationships. Some of them got messed up over over like just circumstances or this and that. And like you said, man, like, you know, for whatever reason, the city doesn't embrace their own. So I was like, all right, let me see where else. You know, just get in where you fit yeah. in. Maybe I just don't fit in here. And as much as I love Miami, I, 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 I can't get away from, it's like, it's like, a toxic relationship but you want it to work you yeah. want to make it work because you see the potential you see like what is potential of and you you're like fuck it i'll just keep taking l's here until i take the w and then that w will yeah. make all the l's worth it exactly yeah. you know it's like what they say about this shit like yo you invest all this money you know thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars some people even hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, sometimes it, it just takes that one hit or these days that one viral moment where you cash out on all the money you've invested. It comes back to you. You know, that that's that's kind of what you work for or work towards at this point. Like, listen, when you and I went to A3C, like when you and I were there, right, we're in Atlanta. And, you know, I remember we were looking for the venue. You know, we had, you know, we were in the hotel room. Yeah. Um. All right, y'all, Breeze rounded us up. All right, y'all, we're going to go to this spot now. So we go down there, and then we bump into, like, a couple other cats from Miami. Like, you know, man, like, with me personally, I am not... I've never really been the type to, like, just pretend to be cool with someone just because we're from the same city. But when someone else asks me about someone from the crib, like... I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be like, yeah, he's doing his thing. You yeah, know, it's yeah. almost like oh, the camaraderie comes ind- indirectly. Of course, because yeah, Lord yeah. knows when I'm in the same room with these fools, like, like it's not genuine. At least, yeah. like, I, I, I catch that vibe a or, lot. Yeah, a lot. And like that, that, that whole mentality of like, oh, you wasn't with me shooting in the gym, and it's like, fool, I was busy. Like, <laughs> you know, like, nah, I wasn't there with you. I was doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah. So if that that attitude of like, oh, you weren't there when I was struggling, and it's like, I'm, I was struggling. Yeah. I was trying to do, you know. Yeah. You so, were on your path. I was on mine. Yeah, exactly. What does it matter? Like, I'm here now. Yeah. You know, like that. Like people f- don't take into account like God's God's timeline. Yeah. You know, like. You now, t- what kind of happens is that artists get so. Uh, wrapped up in their art and in themselves that they forget that everyone around them is also trying to accomplish their own thing whatever it may be maybe outside of music yeah yeah, it might be school it might be Uh a job it might be a business they're trying to you know everybody has something going on in their lives so i've never felt right because trust me i'm i think i'm the fucking prime example like if i sat there and, and broke it down to you as far as like you know 
hey, I made sure everyone around me knew that I had a show coming up or I had a video shoot coming up. And if I tell you the number of, hey, come out this day, this time, blah, 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 versus the number of people that would actually show, it, it's never even close. You feel me? But I never get mad. I never get bitter about it because I understand, hey, people got their own lives. If they can, I'm sure they would. Yeah, like I used and to, if and if I feel like you wouldn't, you ain't I ain't invite you in the first place. And it's also like I just don't have that entitlement anymore. There was a point in time that I was like, "Yo, like announcement, everyone, this is going on in my world." So just so y'all know, yeah. mark your calendars. You know how people will say, "Mark your calendars." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like nowadays, I'm like the total opposite. I'm like, if you have space, it will be tight. You know, yeah. and like. Okay, like how you mentioned, like how you would tell everybody about your music video. You know how sometimes, man, like you'll see like someone it doesn't have to be from Miami. This is just artists on this level of the come up. You yeah. know, they'll be like they'll come out with a video or they'll announce, "Yo, on this day, I'm doing a video. Come through." Time passes. That day happens. Then the video eventually comes out, and then you'll see the video, and it's like it's them. And only like five or six people. Yeah. But they announced it like they were gonna stand in front of like this like legion of people, you know? Like the camera's gonna like like slide back and yeah. the, it's gonna widen and you're gonna see like this endless army of just supporters. <laughs> I feel like that's what people see in their head, you know? Like you ever seen the movie Dragon, the Bruce Lee story? Dragon? I ain't a big movie person, bro, so nah, I'd be lying if I said I was. Well, like, at the end of the movie, like, you, the guy playing Bruce Lee, he's, like, on this very tall ledge, and, like, you see him, like, commence the class, and he goes into, like, a gata, like, he goes into, <laughs> like, and then as the camera kind of starts moving back, you see he once had only a few students, and now he has a whole field of students lined up, just charismatic about being trained by him. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel like upcoming rappers imagine their their roundup to be you know and then you see like the music video and it's just them and like the cameraman's trying his best to make it look like it's packed you know he moves the <laughs> I've, camera i've seen that a lot bro yeah with shows especially <laughs> yeah like, you know what i'm saying like how people always give like uh <laughs> the little instagram thoughts they give them shit about like the angles and shit yeah nobody's a better expert or pro at angles than the fucking video videographers that work with rappers. Yeah, Nobody, yeah, yeah. bruh. They'll Trust like, me. They'll scope out like, okay, there's there's one row of people, but on that side, there's like three people standing behind each other. I'm going to get behind them. Bruh, I, like I've done shows where it's maybe 15, 20 people in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And when I see like the promoter, they have a videographer that they hired to, you know, to, to capture the event or whatever. When I see that video, like, two, three weeks later, I'm like, where the fuck were all those people at? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, I yeah. ain't see them, but it's, it's perception in this game. Most of this game is perception and smoke and mirrors. Do you see yourself touring in the near future? Yeah, that, that's the ultimate goal. As an, as an artist, I think that's everybody, you know, most people's ultimate goal. Um, you know, just from the fact that this is what I love to do and it's what I want to be doing, but also... At the, we're at the point where that's what really the only thing that pays the bills when it comes to music. Um, like, yo, ER, do you see yourself being the type of business minded, up and coming artist where you're willing to not break even for a while until it is able to like actually profit? And, and before you answer, like, what I mean by that is like, are you are you willing to like? Let's say you'll hit up a promoter in uh, New York. Yeah. Right? Yo, I want to perform there. Uh, you know, let, let me sign up. Let's say whatever y'all work out, even if it's not too lucrative, you go there and you don't profit. But you made fans, in at least a, more than a handful of fans that you would assume are going to go home and tell their homies about it. And the yeah. next time you go out, there's more people. There's more people. I mean, that, that's kind of been the basis of my career, to be honest with you. I came into this shit knowing that, yo, it's not, it's not lucrative. Like, I, I, was never, I was never that person that had that dream of, oh, my God, I'm going to be a rapper and I'm going to have all this money and I'm going to have... I knew what the game was before I got into it because I got into this shit late. 
you know what I'm saying? Most people, they start taking their career, quote unquote, seriously at like 16, 17, 18 years old. At that age, I was behind the scenes. Like I really, I was trying to be a producer more than anything. You know what I'm saying? I was making beats in like 08, 09, 2010. I wasn't trying to be a rapper, to, you know, to be real with you. I'm, I'm real low key. I'm behind the scenes. That's not really my thing. You know, so I was behind people like UB, uh, EFN, you know, Colossus during that time. They, they were all the up and comers. They're the ones making noise. So I was just shooting them beats. And somehow I had UB and EFN kind of take me under their wing a little bit, show me around. You know what I'm saying? I got to see how the business end of it worked, the behind the scenes, like the, the boring shit. So... You know, 2011, 2012 was really when I just kind of said fuck it and became a rapper, like, because I wasn't getting the placements. I was I was thinking, like, yo, my beats are dope for sure. People going to jump on them and nothing. I had a placement here, placement there, but it wasn't really taking off how I wanted to. And then people who have heard me rap were always like, yo, just kill your own shit, bro. Like, you'll probably do a better job than they would anyway. So then I was like, fuck it, I ain't got nothing better to do. Better to do. Let me try it out. Who are who are some of your favorite uh, rappers? Rappers, uh, oh, so many. Current or like all time? We we, we can go current. Current, uh, Nipsey. Mm. Currency. Word. Okay. Crit. Uh, who else? Kendrick, of course, as a given, pretty much for anybody. Um, Ross, believe it or not. You know, from a mute, from just a rapper's rapper standpoint, I yeah. think he's you know he's been on point, and I, to me, he gets better over time. Uh, okay. Rock Marciano is another one that I'm a fan of. I think he's slick as fuck with his wordplay. I mean, I mean, do you listen to like any music outside of hip hop? Um, I come across it, I'll listen to it, but I I don't jam to it. I'm a, I'm a student of hip hop, so you're all like, the way through. You're like one of these like just hip hop all the way. Like the, the only music that's on your you know, streaming services, yeah. just rap. Uh, 98% of what comes through my ears is rap. Probably you, closer to 99. Do you remember how, like, when you and I were kids, man, like, I mean, I didn't know you. I'm saying, yeah, like, yeah. When, you and I were, <laughs> when you and I were kids, yeah. like, our parents would throw these parties, and they had the same playlist of all the Spanish songs. It's like the same 20 records. Yo, you know? I, just, I just had this conversation with my girl the other day, and, like, she saw it for herself because she's friends with my mom on Facebook. I, I used to tell her, like, hey, like, at the little kids' birthday parties, at the family get-togethers and shit, it was all salsa, merengue. But it was uh, like the same records. Punta music, always, every time, and throughout the, the 90s. And then they'll throw in like the slow Spanish song, the Fue de la quiere, <laughs> no me castigue. Remember? But you know what the crazy shit with me was? That was the party environment. When we were at home, I barely ever heard Spanish music. My mom's like a big soul fan, disco fan. Um you know, R and B fan and my dad was like all the way reggae with it, you know, with a little Spanish music here and there. But my upbringing, funny enough, you know, when you look back at the trail of it now, leading up to this point, was always soul, R and B, reggae, and then somehow I end up rapping. Yeah. Do you think maybe that you, you like got into rap because of the neighborhood or just because of how popular it was in the late 90s? I would say I got into rap just from the people around me, like my neighbors and shit and my cousins, because that's, mm. that's all they were on. Cause it's when always I was, the cousins. When, yeah, hey, straight up, because when I was born, my cousins were living with me. Yeah. So I was born in 87. So by the time, you know, I'm three, four, where I'm able to understand music, I'm hearing Two Live Crew uh, Poison Clan, Dr. Dre, Snoop, Wu Tang Clan, so on and so on. Like that, my first understanding of music was that. So I think they they corrupted me from the beginning. <laughs> man, yeah, man, like it's crazy, bro. Like fucking music, man. I have cousins that like they pursued other careers, bro. I have a cousin that's a pilot. Man. You know, I have another cousin that he does. He sells like like life insurance and like yeah uh, and. Like these guys, bro. Yo, their Instagram is lit. Like they're yeah. they're living good, bro. They're living really good. But then on the flip side, they'll hit me up. Like they're proud of they're proud of me for not quitting. Yeah. And like like I have a cousin of mine that was like, yo, you know my girl's nephew is like he wants to get into music. Like what's up? You know, can you show him the ropes a little bit? 
And man, I, I just told him straight up, I'm like, bro, I need to be shown the ropes yeah, right hey, now. People don't get that shit. It's like, funny that you say that, though, because I've gotten that a lot throughout the year. Like, I've been taking music serious, serious, like what, since 2011, 2012, when I really just dove in and said, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to go get it. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing as you, man. I have cousins who... You know, they have careers, like regular careers, and they support the shit out of me. Like, they almost, it's almost like they live vicariously through me. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because they had their own dreams and goals of shit they wanted to do, and, you know, life happens, and you get sucked up into that, into the career mode. You know what I'm saying? I even have a cousin of mine who's a trucker. He drives um, rigs for a living, and whenever I have an out-of-town show, if it's within reason, he's going to take that drive, even if it's a couple of hours. Like, if he has downtime, he's like, yo, I'm taking a drive. What time do you show at? All right, I could make it there an hour before. I'll see you there. That is awesome, bro. And to, like, to me, that as much as we're in the pursuit of money, that, that shit right there is dope to me. Yeah, like, it just makes me wonder, man. Like, maybe people give up on their dreams because, not because they don't think they're good enough, but because what they did in the meantime, just say it's safer. They're like, yo, Hell listen, yeah. yo, listen, man, I, I took this course, I learned how to do this, and like I said, I learned it. And now I, my bills are getting paid. Like, why would I venture yeah. away from this safety net yeah. to try to walk on a tightrope? Nah, definitely. You know? I mean, bro, like if, if I invested the time and money and, and learning and studying that I did into music into something more, quote unquote, safer, I'd be so much more comfortable than what I am. But I know that I wouldn't be anywhere near as happy because I could honestly say music's probably the thing that keeps me fucking sane. Like, if I didn't have music, I, I don't know where the fuck I'd be at. And I could tell you that honestly. No, you ain't lying. I know exactly what that's And like. I'm sure that sounds crazy coming from me who's always so laid back and cool and like nonchalant and shit. But I'm able to be like that because of music, because that's my therapy. You, uh, 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 you and I were talking before I started the podcast how like... <clears throat> How you wanted to get a new mic. Yeah. Right? Yo, let me put you on, man. Have you ever heard of Zounds.com? Zounds, yeah. Z Z O U N D S? Yeah. Yo, they do monthly payments on products and they it's no interest rate. You just pay the first month and, and the tax and they send it to you. That's dope. Like this that mic might. that I have, this I have a warm audio W A eighty seven that I'm speaking into. Like my man Alpha Beat recommended me this one when the mic that you're speaking into when I wanted to upgrade from it. So I was like, man, like I can't afford a an expensive mic. Yeah, yeah. How, how am I going to, you know? I recorded all the reference tracks to Transit City on the mic you're speaking into. And then I I was put onto Zounds.com by my man Rev, you know? And then I had hit up Alpha B like, yo, what do you recommend? He told me the mic, the WA87. I, I hit up Zounds and my credit is horrible, bro. <laughs> I have really bad credit, man. I mean, I'm working on it. Yeah. You know, my word is better than my credit, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... Nah, your your word is bond. I could say that. You know, I've known you as long as I've known you. I could say that. So, like, sure. thank you, man. I mean, like, so, like, bro, like, I would recommend not only to you, but just any listener, and I'm not sponsored by these people, like, hit up Damn, sounds. it sounds like one, right? <laughs> Yo, hey, listen, you ever, you ever heard of Maddie Matheson, the cook? Yeah. He's, like, from Maddie Matheson, heavy set dude with the mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, he, like... You can tell he's eating real good off of that Cholula sponsorship because he mentions Cholula every episode like 20 times. All the close-ups with the branding and shit. Yeah, it's like, that reminds me of like Combat Jack and shit with Bevel. Yeah. You couldn't go a, a show without hearing about Bevel. Yeah. like I wonder like how uh, how it's like a slippery slope with product placement. Like Here I am. I'm hyping up Zounds.com because like, bro, I got this mic. It's real life. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, you, it's real like life. These things, like, yo, like, these people hooked me up, bro, and I could afford it. But, like, you know, like, you can tell when someone gets sponsored by something that they don't really rock with, but they know that that company benefits off of the audience that you're catering yeah. to. So it just sounds... It sounds cold. Empty. Scripted as fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what you telling me, I know you're not being sponsored by them. You know what I'm saying? I know that you're genuine about it. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be speaking on it. Like, that's one thing that I feel like is smart about, like, any artist that wants to, like, go on tour, which I'm I'm, I'm currently building myself, and the probation is funny, you know? Of course. They, they fuck you up big yeah. time. Like, it's it's pretty much jail outside of jail. 
and it's like the worst. It's like the most trippiest type of confinement. It's like, it's like a. There's this meme. There's this picture on the internet where it's like it's a horse that's tied up to like just a chair. That's this horse can swing that chair around a hundred times, yeah. but he stays there because in his mind, like he's anchored to this thing, you know. Yeah. Or like, you know, you draw a circle around you, and like you're on. You tell a kid you're on timeout. Don't get out of this circle. But there's nothing really holding them back from crossing over this line, you know? That's what probation just is the, like. Just the punishment that he knows behind it. Right. If you were to step out, literally step out of line. Yeah, It's yeah. crazy. That's that's what probation is like because truthfully, like, when you're on probation, you're not supposed to be able to exit out of your county, out of the, you know, the, uh, the place that you're only allowed to be in. So, like, if you want to go over a friend's house, let's say Miami-Dade County, and let's say yeah. I want to go to a friend's house in Hollandale. And Hollandale is not even a mile past the county line. It's across the street. That's yeah. it. I can't. That's crazy. Without you, permission. You can't you even know? be in contact with felons and shit. And, you know, being in the world of hip hop, I'm sure that could even make doing the the podcast tough sometimes. Technically. Alleg- allegedly. You know? Allegedly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like but you know what, man? Like <clears throat> like um like I would recommend anyone that wants to hit the road to like if you don't have the money for it, try to figure out a way to like make it a win win, you know? Yeah. Like, definitely. Like if you can't afford it, maybe there's a, a couple sponsors out there. When I was throwing shows, man, like I would hit up like little clothing lines and shit. Like I remember those clothing line called um Destined for Greatness. I don't know if they're still around or right. It's been some years since I spoke to them. Yeah. But I had that song on my mixtape twelve AM where at the end of the song Wake Up, I'm like destined for greatness i don't say unless i'm mistaken whatever it's just a little phrase i repeat it and yeah. then i was put onto that clothing line and i pitched it to him like yo this kind of fits and they hooked me up with some shirts that's and shit. dope and that's how it should be that's organic you know yeah. what i'm saying like just knowing that there's a mutual benefit off of y'all working together and rocking with each other's shit it's not just all right they got a they got a, a following fuck it i don't fuck with them but nah i don't i don't like doing business like that like you know who, who's a, a brand that like to this day i've i've like remained loyal to, like my loyalty is with this brand it's called reflection dynamics right reflection dynamics is based in new york so like no lie the next time that you're out there i totally wouldn't mind linking you up with yeah with uh, the homies from reflection dynamics like remember the first time that action bronson came down to miami yeah i was i was on that bill I perform. I think it's at the one Eve. He, it's the one, yeah, where he almost didn't make it because he got out of the hospital and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, I want to say the act before the act, the second and last act before Action Bronson. Mm, funny. Yeah. Well, like my man Berto from Reflection Dynamics, he's the one that like either I don't want to misspeak. I know for a fact because a- Ashley Outrageous like linked up to like promote to like brand it under her like line of shows yeah but like birdo from reflection dynamics i remember he he at least either put half the bread up or all the bread one of the two i don't want to misspeak and say all the bread if someone else threw in but like i remember how it was back in that show bro back at eve that was one of the illest hip-hop shows that i ever went to i think that's the best crowd i've ever seen in miami yeah bro and i think um my boy uh, John Carlos had a hand uh, in that show too. Shout out to John Carlos, man. Yeah, I still bus. speak. I still speak to him to this day. Yeah, that's, bro. That's one of the humblest, most you know, what I'm saying, truest, realest dudes that I've met in this scene. Now that I think about it, now that I'm looking back, I do remember him kind of having a hand in it too. But I, like him and Brian. Yeah, Blanco. him and Brian. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, man. Shout out to Bus, man. I I, I speak to Bus uh, frequently. You know that like for a little while I was um I was helping him film for like fat nick i remember you know seeing saying? that i fat was nick like yo Puglia. i was like that's dope so this is the thing now that we're on that topic right so like real quick shout out to Berto from the fashion dynamic shout out to ashley outrageous uh shout out to bust speaking of of john carlo right i call him bust you yeah know? me too like and he works with fat nick right so the, all these people that we mentioned are from like the city you know miami but like cats like okay denzel curry fat nick Puya, they're from this new generation that there's a lot of misconception that they don't, that they, it's that, it's not hip hop, or it's like it's just trap or it's just SoundCloud rap or whatever. But like, 
low key, if you listen to like Puya's album Five Five, like he can spit. That fool was spitting, bro. I you don't, know? I don't really like that whole shit of trap rap, uh, SoundCloud rap, and this type of rap, and that. Like, yo, it's all rap at the end of the day. Like, why would one thing be restricted to one lane? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just real rock. Yeah. That sounds dumb as fuck if you actually think about it. Like, yo, there's alternative rock. There's, uh, you know what I'm saying, heavy metal. There's grunge. There's punk. Like, And you know what's funny about, like, rock and roll? You know how you know how people that aren't into hip-hop, they'll say, ah, oh, but it all sounds the same, right? Yeah. There's that thing. But if you think about it, rock and roll is literally the same four instruments. It's an electric guitar, a drum, uh, a drummer, a bassist, and then, like, the vocalist. Yo, you know what's funny that you just said that? In the 90s, 2000s, early 2010s, when people would say, yo, but all that rap shit sounds the same. I'd be like, yo, you're fucking crazy because of this, that, this, that. I'm around, I, I happen to be around like younger dudes all the time. You know what I'm saying? Just people that I'm cool with from the neighborhood or people that, you know, I'm 30. So now I'm at this point where I have friends who are 39, 40, 41, 42, that their kids are now hitting their 20s because they had them early. So I stay in the loop with the shit that they're on. Yo, honestly, though, we're at the point now with rap where shit does sound the same. We're at the point where they even look the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll hear somebody, and I'm like, yo, I, you couldn't tell me that this wasn't this person. And that happens a lot with, um, with the homie Rockwell. You know what I'm saying? J Rock, well, I don't know if you, if you met him during yeah, man, Ace's I, time. No, nah, I filmed. Yeah, uh, you, you yeah, did. yeah, yeah. I don't know who he is. I've heard him do shit before he ever drops it, like in the studio, or he'll email it to me or show it to me, like when he's around the hood or whatever. And then I'll listen just out, you know, I'll just come across a track and I'm like, yo, like this shit sounds exactly the same as Rockwell. You know, and now these dudes are starting to all look the same, which is crazy to me. They're like, it were, you know, there's certain aspects of where people are like, oh, SoundCloud rap, trap rap, whatever, where there is no originality. I'll say it. You know what I'm saying? Do but, you think that like that whole approach of like just, okay, they all sound the same and look the same. I can see some parallels between that approach of music with like our cousins that go corporate. Yeah. Like they all look the same, suit and tie, blue collar. Uh, damn, they all talk, yeah, they all talk the some same. some real shit. You know, because I've I've even had people tell me straight up like, yo, people who are in that lane, you know, I ain't going to name no names, but they're like, yo, I don't give a fuck if I sound like trash. This is just a lick to me. So mm, it's like, it's yo, crazy. like out. Yo, and I'm talking about. And, dudes, that's, and that's like music industry approach. Yeah. You know? there, there's two. There's two lanes to that. People who could actually rap who can put together great shit, but they're like, yo, if I do what I can act, you know, if I, if I really go in and do me, it's not going to go nowhere. It's easier for me to just do this. And there's also the people that, you know, they're, they're in the street, they trap, whatever it is that they do. They, they get their money anyway, that they see it as a way that they can clean it. And they're like, yo, I've never rapped a day in my life. And I don't give a fuck if it's garbage, but people like garbage now. So I'm going to do garbage. I'm going to dress this way. I'm going to talk this way. It's crazy. Like, in a way, in context to that, like, that is, like, corporate rap. It is. Yo, you know? it's exactly corporate rap because, you know, the, the point is to try to hit the lick and sign the record deal. That's even if Even if money-wise you don't need it, you need it for another reason. You know, if you could, if you could put two and two together, that like you need that signing. You know what I'm saying? It's wild as fuck. It is corporate. Yeah, like if anything, that's more blue collar rap than like people that try to label you know that the term blue collar rap, like people that rap about regular life. Yeah. They rap about I've like I've never heard that. Like I've oh, never heard that yeah that like, label. Oh, yeah, like, oh that's blue collar rap. Oh like what he's talking about is this rap song is about having a hard day at work or to, my boss is an asshole. Like you're rapping about the blue collar life. Yeah. But That's these wild. cats that be rapping about trapping with face tats and colored dreads. I've never seen it a day in their life. That that talk about that shit, like about that life, you know, 
that is starting to become, or not starting, we, we just talked about it, I'm repeating yeah. myself, but that's but like it formulaic. Yo, right? like, we're at the point now where, you know, I'm sure people are realizing this by now, but I might fuck up some people's, like, way of looking at it. We've gotten to the, we're in the day and age where record labels are signing acts, quote unquote, that don't even make music. So, like, you have certain people in the YouTube world or in the podcast world. I'm not going to name no names. I'm telling you this because I've heard it from from within. They, I'll put it to you like this. There's people who are employees of these record labels to control the narrative. To control what you see and who you're hearing. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know of what course. I'm saying? But a lot of people don't realize but that. But that's how it was back in the magazine days, too. Like, yeah. edit the editorials, yeah, yeah, yeah. the pick and choose. It was, but there was more of a quality control back exactly. then. Exactly. Now it's a matter of, okay, this person went viral, or this person has a million followers or a million views. Or, you know, it's crazy. Like, and I, I've gotten to the point where I know this. I'm, I'm still not going to chase that shit. That's not who I am. That's not what I make music for. So I'm going to keep doing my thing. And, you know, it, it's grown. My audience has grown. My fan base has grown. Like, my my footprint in rap has grown because I just choose to do my shit how I want to do it at my own pace. I'm not in a rush. You know, because I'm sure you've came across the shit where you have a lot of people that, man, if this shit don't hit by the time I'm 25, this shit don't hit by the time I'm 30, I'm out. And it's like, yo, some of the greatest shit in the world, the creators or the curators of, never got their just due until way later. I think that 25 is an unfair age for people to like set a, set a limit to. And I think that that kind of started, I may be wrong, but I think that 25 was the age because that's when Tupac died. Like Tupac Damn. died at 25. I never looked at so I never like, thought about that. So they're like, yo, like... I had this one song I haven't released yet where I was like, where I'm like, I go, Eminem was, 20, Eminem was 27 when he dropped Slim Shady. After that, he was famous. Uh, Jay came out with Reasonable Doubt, the same age as him, and that was one for the ages. Tupac and Biggie were living legends by the time they died. They was in their mid-20s. You know what I'm saying? Like, this whole, this whole like, oh, mid to 20s is the, yeah. is the, is the biological clock of your rap career. To me, that is... To me, that is toxic and stupid. You know what's crazy about that? When did you first hear of me? Like 2012, right? Yeah. More or less? I was turning 25 that year. Yeah. Which That's why I said before, I came into this shit late. Yeah. I came in at the time where most people would be like, man, fuck this, I'm out. I ain't hit on nothing. I'm going to go get a job or I'm going to go do this or I'm going to go to school. 25 is when I was like, fuck it, let me, let me try this shit out. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not a fan of the ages nah. and shit. Like if especially anything, nowadays, man. Like not to cut you off, but like yo, you know, I think the most the biggest example that we've seen of that is like Two Chains, who rebranded himself and you know broke off and became this fucking worldwide star late, way later than you know the time people would have given up by. And even on the more underground side of things, you have people like you know. Uh, West Side Gun and Conway and, you know, Rock Marcy and people like that who are just, they're now starting to become names in rap and, you know, them dudes are probably like mid-30s, damn near hitting 40. You know, there's no age limit to, to greatness. Right. At all. Because that only exists in rap. You look at rock, you look at reggae, you look at Spanish music. These dudes are performing into their 60s, 70s and shit. And for whatever reason, we don't really have the appreciation of of the elders of this shit. Maybe because, that's, maybe that's because no one's old yet. Yeah, well, I mean, we're we're a young genre. You feel me? So the, that barrier is starting to break a little bit. But now you kind of on like when you go look on the internet and shit, you see this whole old head shit. You know, the jits, SoundCloud rappers versus the old heads and shit. And it's like, yo, what what's an old head? Because you're not gonna call somebody like Two Chains or Old Head based on the type of music they make. And even if they, even if they did, like that holds no reasonable merit. It's like at all. It's like the response to that would be like so with a question mark, like so. Yeah. You know. You know, like, but it's funny because that whole shit is a, is all the result of of what you were saying is corporate rap. Because I know for a fact a lot of the it's manufactured at this point and it's so blatant. 
that it doesn't even matter anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like you're taking kids. And I've always kind of felt a way about that shit because I come from that environment. And you you know my music. I've never been on this whole, oh, I'm a fucking trapper. I do this. I do that. Even with me being around it, I've never really glorified that. I've never really went into like so much detail into that, partially because like I know that I have to be careful about the shit that I say. You know what I'm saying? I can't be like my homie this and my homie that because I can actually fuck their life up if the wrong ears were to come across that. So I have to be subtle and about that, how I write my music. And right. then you have, you know, not to cut you off because nah, I know you're going to come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have these kids that come into it and talking about all this shit that they don't know. They don't have the first clue of. They've never even seen that side of town. You know what I'm saying? So I've always respected the fact that with you, I've always known what you were on. But I'm like, damn, yo, this dude, project after project, EP after EP, never mentions it. And that's the realest shit to me. I have way more respect than, for that than, you know, the opposite. You know, man, like, uh, things change, bro. Like, <laughs> like I used nah, to. Nah, I peep it. I used to. Is that, you know what it is, man? Is that like one it's day. your I, life, bro. One day I'm going to die, bro. It's your life. And I got I got to tell my story. I don't yeah, give a yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, Jay ha- Jay, Jay-Z has that one line where he's like. Y'all record, I recall, because I've really been there before, Yeah, you know? And like... Nah, I, I peeped it when you started, you know, throwing it in a little bit here, a little bit there. I was like, yo, I'm not even mad at that, because that's his, you know, that's his story. That's his real life. Ah, get ready. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> like... The thing is, man, is that, look, bro, like, like I said, man, one day, I'm a fucking die, bro. Like, and, you know, I just want... I just want my story to be told by from the horse's mouth, bro. Yeah. And like, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, listen, I'm as clean as a whistle right now, bro. Yeah. Like, my PO does not stress me at all, bro. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, what's up? Like, <laughs> you call me here every month. <laughs> like, all I do is just sign a paper and leave. You don't got no questions for me. Yeah. You know? Nah. And it's like, good. Good. <laughs> just psh, all good, bro. And like, now that I've I've lived... Yo, I can sincerely say, bro, that day jobs are the shit, bro. Like day yeah, jobs you are. You can't di- be mad at somebody who works, you know, to to put food on their table and and finance their dreams and shit. Like that shit was always lame to me to hate on somebody for having a job. Because the first thing that goes, the first thing that goes when you feel like, nah, this nah, this day job ain't making enough. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do some some other shit. The yeah. first thing that goes is your peace of mind, and then you, yeah. and then everything your the the ground crumbles from under you. Everyone is affected by it. Everyone, your mom, your dad, your yeah. girl, your friends, even your dog starts to tremble a little bit. Courage, a cowardly dog around you, <laughs> like everything crumbles around you once you don't have the peace of mind. Especially if you're a man, bro. You're a man. You're the foundation of your of of. Your life, bro. You're supposed to be the one holding it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. And before you know it, it starts holding you down. You know, like you want to take the walk and then the walk ends up taking you. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And it's like, that shit's, yo, like when, anyone that tells you, yo, don't quit your day job, they might be telling that to you because they don't think you're good. Yo, don't quit your day job, bro. But those words is God telling you, yo, stay cool, bro. Of course. You know? I mean, because... You know, and not to be like on some, I'm the shit or nothing like that. But, bro, like, if we're going off of talent alone, you shouldn't have to be working a day job. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, like, we shouldn't have to be working a day job. Like, we, somebody like uh, Naked Viking, you know what I'm saying? He sent me a pack of beats, bro. Like, that. that's probably going to be the best music I've, I've recorded so far. You know what I'm saying? We're, our talent should be paying for your lifestyle, but it doesn't work that way. So I, I've seen it happen to where, you know, dudes that are talented, they're like, nah, fuck this shit. I shouldn't be having to be working no job. I'm too raw to be working this job. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it comes back and it hurts you in a real way. Yeah, because you're almost like, now you're living a lie. You're yeah. like, you know what? I can't go back to working a job. All this talking that I did, I can't do that. Damn, how am I going to make money? Yeah. Fuck. If if I'm I ain't start have, doing some dumb shit. Yeah. You get caught up mm-hmm. in a cycle. You know what I'm saying? Like if it wasn't for me working jobs throughout the years, you would have never heard of ER three oh five. 
You know what I'm saying? Where was that money to record and, and, and market and all that going to come from? And that's and that's such a golden information, man. Like it's not about what you do to make money; it's what you do with the money you make. Exactly. You know, like that. That is the golden. That's the smoking gun right there, bro. Like, listen, man. Like, there's nothing wrong with making honest money, bro. You know what's the best part about making honest money? I don't the, gotta look over my shoulder. Your mirror. You got. You can look at yourself. I know, you know? so many people, bro, that they can't look. They. Their head just fucking spins on their shoulders all day. They yeah. don't have no peace of mind. They don't. And man. I'm thankful that I've, you know, for the most part, I've been able to stay on this side of it, cause it's real. It's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, dog, I know people who, you know, they're they're tight with me, and I can't even be in contact with them like that because every other week the phone number they had doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yep. And I'm sure you, you. I'm sure you know. You know. You've seen that, I'm sure. Yeah, I, there have been some people that I uh, I was really close with, man. I have no idea what they're. I have no idea, man, what they're up to. They're, like, and it's almost like people that get involved in that in that life, they almost like, bro, they don't have an Instagram account. Like, their Facebook is deleted already. Yeah. they're like yeah. off the grid, and it's like, was it really all worth it? Yeah, you you know? got no peace of mind. Yeah, bro, you don't got no peace of of just no, normality. Yeah, and and like being normal is cool, man. Like, listen, man, a normal life. If anything, this whole like approach on like you want to talk about your crazy ass life on one side of the coin, everyone's gonna like vicariously live your crazy life through you. But like when you like you get so accustomed to like just doing the talking about the craziest shit that like now. What about the, all the regular shit, bro? Yeah. You know? That's what I think with my music, that's that's what it ultimately comes down to is like a balance. You know what I'm saying? Because I've given the, the, that shit, that side of it, because I've been around it. You know, I've came up in it. The people that, that I can consider family and call my closest friends, you know, that, that was really going on. So I'm able to give you that perspective. I'm also able to be introspective enough to give you my my real life, my daily shit, the shit that I have to deal with that comes with living a real life that nobody's immune to. I don't care how big of a trapper you are, how big of a scammer you are, how big of anything you are, you know what I'm saying? Or even on the corporate side, how much money you make a year, there's shit that none of us could escape. And I think that's been, my 2018 has been that. That at the end of the day, bro, you can have all the shit you think you have and you can't beat life. And as artists, I think it's important that we reflect that. Yeah, man. Like, listen, that's what makes the American dream so good, man. Like, the American dream, bro. Like, our parents, bro, like, my, like you're El, Sal- El Salvadorian, right? What are you? Nah, my, my mom's Honduran and my Honduran. dad's from Guatemala. That's what it is, yeah. So, that you know, them, even though they're citizens, they're affected as fuck by everything that's going on, you know, in the political world. That yeah. that's shit that we have to think about because, yo, even my mom, you know, like, I think it was like a year or two back, she was at a little like at a corner store just buying a couple things that she needed, and I showed up, and shut down the doors and was like, yo, everybody show papers now. Or you're going to Chrome. For those who don't know, Chrome's like the the detention center for like immigrants and shit. So had she not had her like ID and shit on her that day. You know, that would have been a whole ordeal we would have had to deal with. Yeah. Shit's real out here, bro. Yeah, like, you know, man, uh, <clears throat> I don't really like to talk about politics too much, especially in, in the current, in the current <laughs> landscape. Like, I don't have a problem being in a room with people that share different views. Of course. But other people have a big problem with that. Yeah. Where, like, if you don't agree with them, then they look at you like you have... Like you're evil. Like yeah. you have this motive. Yeah. Like what? You don't agree with me? Yeah. Like, and it's almost like everyone has a good heart, but like not everyone's car has high beams. You know, it, <laughs> like not everyone's car has that foresight. You yeah. Feel me? And it's like, man, at that point, bro, it's just like it almost goes back to just being like biblical. Like you know what, man? I I, I love you, bro. It's straight. You yeah. know, like we don't have to agree. It's all right, bro. I have I have you know friends that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, how do I word this? I have friends who 
whose family doesn't necessarily agree with, you know, Hispanics and blacks being such a prominent, you know, a percentage of Miami. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're brought up in these, you know, with a different train of thought. But thankfully, with them growing up in such a, a you know what I'm saying, multicultural city and shit, they, they're able to see beyond what they were told. And they end up being good friends of mine. You feel me? And even if that way of thinking's kind of impacted them a little bit to where they see some shit different than how I see it, we could still have that conversation and at the end of the day shake hands and go grab a drink and be chilling. But you're right. There's people that, yo, you you can't even say the wrong shit around them. You know, you, you know I, I think that if uh, if somebody attempted, damn it, this is this almost sounds imaginative. Um, you know that we've been talking for more than an hour already. Hey, it's like can't even tell. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. But like, I think that it'll be a good idea for someone to. I, I don't know if maybe this exists already, but like, to have people with opposing views sit down, like how you and I are talking now. Yeah. But like, one is not allowed to interrupt the other. That'd you know? be dope. Cause if like, and talk about it. People that are like that are, are having issues with other ones like religious beliefs yeah. or class or culture or skin color or uh, uh whatever. Yeah. But like for them to be able to express themselves and because the thing is, is that when you when when you're interrupted, you feel like you're you're it's an insult. Yeah. Now like, you get upset. You get upset and, and you get flustered because you're trying to arrive at a point. Now and you they raise just your like voice and it's, mm-hmm. it's a and fucking domino effect. Yeah, so if someone can just sit down and be like, "Yo, look, I'm going to I'm going to say exactly how I feel about everything." That way you can kind of gain an understanding and then I'll listen to you. And even if we yeah. walk away from it like this guy's an asshole, <laughs> at least you can somewhat see the logic of where their frustrations come from. Yeah. That'll be tight. Yeah, that would know? be dope. I think Dudes like you and me would be good uh, intermediaries for that shit because we have a balanced view. We've seen a lot. We've heard a lot. Yo, like I'm sure you, you know what I'm saying, being in the parts of Cali that you were in and even having to, you know, spend that time that you did like in in Missouri and shit, I'm sure it was an eye opener. Yeah, it The contrast of how people think and how they see things compared to the, because Miami's kind of a bubble in that sense. We're pretty open, you know. We're pretty open-minded to shit, and a lot of places in America aren't that way. Yeah, like one thing, just to touch on this real quick. Like one thing that was to my surprise was I grew up imagining prison to be full of black people, you know, because yeah. of how Tupac would talk about it and, and just the way they show it on TV. Yeah, yeah. But, but in that prison I was in, I met maybe maybe four black people. It was all white people. <laughs> I was the only Cuban, you know. It goes back to to what we're talking about controlling the narrative, right? It's crazy. That shit's a, that shit's like a a rabbit hole, bro. Yeah, for you real. go you look down that way, you're gonna get sucked into just. And speaking of the rabbit hole, man, like like my man Kimber, he like laid this down perfectly. I was expressing my frustrations to him about about how things are nowadays with like just the media pushing this this narrative, this rhetoric, you know? Yeah. And I, I was like fr- really frustrated about man, how can they? Like, I'm I was really upset and just frustrated about it. And like, we arrived at this point where it's like, yeah, it's kind of like Wonderland, like Alice in Wonderland, because <laughs> Alice goes down the rabbit hole, and in that Wonderland is where it's all crazy as fuck. But in real life, everything is just normal as shit. Yeah, you know, it literally is like the rabbit hole, and That's like the media, the media is like Wonderland. <laughs> but like when you turn the TV off and you look outside, birds are chirping and people are just chopping it up, yeah, chilling. Yeah. You know, and like nah, look, there's there's definitely shit being pushed, and you know, shit that I see that I'm like, yo, this shouldn't be, this isn't how y'all should be handling shit. But who am I? Yeah, you feel me? I and, that I guess that's what my art's for, right. and what your art's for. Yeah. Well, this was tight, man. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, the. I feel like these are the type, the best types of conversations because it starts off on surface level and then we get a little bit. We went down the rabbit hole. Yeah, and then somehow, <laughs> it, somehow it always comes back to like yeah. 
our craft, which happens to be music. Yeah. One know? thing I do want to say, just because I caught myself on it, where I was saying um, that it was important for us to have like real content in our music. That's not to say that a hundred percent of it needs to be that way. We all like we're human. You feel me? So we have those moments of of realizing or you know what I'm saying being realist as to what our circumstances are, what our situations are, and speaking on it so that other people know out there in the world that they're not alone to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now I really like after this year, I know I have to dig deeper in my music that I have before, because before I would keep it kind of, you know, leveled off. I wouldn't go too deep just because I ain't want to lo- lose you. But now I realize that yo, there's no way I can lose you. There's six billion people in the world, and somebody else out there has gone through the shit that I've gone through. But that's not to say that as humans, we don't also turn up and have fun and go out and have a good time. So, you know, balance, I think more than anything, is what's needed in the game. And I like to think that I've always brought that out with my music. You know, you have your Any Given Sundays. You have your downtowns with you on it, which that's probably like the deepest that I've dug into into the street side of shit, but still keeping it... uh, Low friendly, key, friendly. Not even friendly. Just not being too detailed for my own good on it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You have your on the lows, your tunnel. Like I, I've been well rounded in that shit, and I think it's important for all artists to be able to be well rounded. Yeah, because we get too stuck in like where we're comfortable at, and yeah. then we end up cutting ourselves short. Yeah. Word up, man. <clears throat> Let people know. Let people know where they can find you on social media, ER. Uh, everything is ER305. So That's a 0305. 305, yeah. yeah. Let me be specific about that. Yeah, ER305. Funny, funny story. I have an Alexa, and I've realized that that shit is terrible to say, Alexa, play ER305, because the only shit that it finds with 305 is 305 to my city by Drake. So if you have Alexa, don't look me up that way. You have to say some crazy shit like uh, Earth 305 or something like that. Yeah, well, if you have an Alexa, <laughs> just turn that shit off because they have mics and they listen to everything you say. Gee, and just, shit. And just type in ER305, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, Pandora, you name it. ER305, 305. I'm on there. Word. We have a song called Downtown. Check that shit out. That's when I still have my big ass beard. We also have we have a few records. Uh, e- better check your ego. Ego. Hey, that's one of my favorite songs of yours, man. Thanks. And man. I'm not saying that because I'm on the hook, but just the the message behind that song is fucking dope. Yeah, man. And we got a lot more shit for the future. I'm sure it's organic. We don't force ourselves to make music. Absolutely. When it comes, it comes. Um. So look, guys. Uh. <clears throat> that being said, make sure you check out Er. Check out his music. Um, if you are interested in w- this watching us live, like not for nothing, man, but like holler at us. You feel me? Yeah. Drop a comment sure. on the social media. Let us know what city you're in. You feel me? And like we we're taking notes, man. Before you know, it, we're gonna hit the road. We're gonna be sponsored by Latin Cafe, and we'll be passing on media notes just like hotcakes. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> All right, y'all. We out of here, man. Peace. Peace. Media noche. Media noche. Medianoche. 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 Podcast, podcast, podcast. Medianoche. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Medianoche. 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 Podcast, podcast, podcast.